Brian Jade, welcome to The Way Magazine. It's a great honor to have you here tonight. It's a pleasure to be here. How are you? Great. So, uh, Brian, you are uh, in the public eye right now because you just did uh, an enormous debut on TV and in the theater, obviously, for La Fenice, first concert of the year. So how was it? Tell me. Uh, it, was a, it was a crazy experience. You know, we're there for such a short time and uh, we have three concerts leading up uh, to the actual day that everybody sees on television. Uh, so it was it was fun. We had a blast. It was nice to sing an aria for the first time. I tried out to the Ridi Pagliaccio for the first time. I had never sung it before in front of the public. And uh, that was fun. And of course, I love singing Nessun Dorma. So no, no, no trouble there. You can't get any more Italian than that, do you? <laughs> no, and it's like the most famous aria in all of opera. So, I mean, after Pavarotti and the three tenors and all this, it's the most famous aria ever. <laughs> so it's a fun one to sing. Everybody loves it. So, Brian, how old are you now? 42. So at 42, you made it on national television, not only in Italy, but worldwide and with such an amazing and iconic uh, concert. And But you've been to Italy before, right? Yes, in fact, I've been on uh, Rai a few times because uh, I've had broadcasts of uh, opera productions that I've done uh, in San Carlo. And I've also been on television in Italy from uh, Palermo when we did a butterfly there. So there have been some other things where I've been seen by Italian, the Italian community, but this is probably the biggest one because it's so, it was such an important concert, you know? Yeah, Brian, so is the fact that more than 4 million people watched it live uh, make any difference on, uh, on a professional channel like you? You know, I don't tend to think about the video and I because I have no control over what people are shooting and um, also um, I can't control what the microphone picks up you know because there's a microphone on me there are microphones in the house and on the stage so there are many microphones and they're blending the sound so I can't control that so I sing for the people in front of me uh, and you know it was lovely to sing for that audience in that house so I hoped that it sounded good online and I got to hear it afterwards and luckily it sounded okay. So <laughs> I, I have no idea what people hear when they hear me sing. In fact, even when I'm singing in the house, in the opera house, what I hear is not what the audience hears. So I never really know until people tell me whether they thought it was good or not, or uh, you know, if they enjoyed it specifically for any you know, reason. So I just do my best every time and go out there and try and give a good show. So obviously you're a big professionalist and you're, you've been playing and singing worldwide, but uh, does uh, the, the contest, I mean, the, uh, the ambience of the uh, uh, performance make any difference? Like, you know, La Fenicia has got like a, such an historical uh, heritage and you, you obviously performed, I don't know, like Metropolitan in New York and everything, but uh, does it make any difference to you? You know, I... I... I think I, I, everybody would want to say that it doesn't make a difference, right? Because, you know, you're, you, you try to make sure that every performance is your best performance, no matter where you're performing. But of course, there are these high pressure moments where, you know, obviously, like you said, 4 million people are watching and it's a very important concert. It's probably one of the most important performances of the year in a certain country. And so certain things do have more weight, I think. But in the same, to the same degree, I'm always trying to give my best. I'm always trying to give the performance of my life for everybody I can. And I try to succeed at that as much as possible. I'm a human being, I try. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, it, 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 I don't think it weighs much more. In, the, in general, I wanna say that um, I just try to give my best every show. So Brian, let's get, I'm, I want to take this opportunity to, to, to get into the life of a tenor like you. You're a young tenor making it big everywhere. And uh, what brought you to the opera? Uh, you know, I always loved music and my family was musical. Uh, we sang a lot, but never opera. <laughs> and uh, I fell into opera by accident. You know, as an American, uh, a lot of us don't grow up with opera in the household. Uh, so we don't, we're not what used to- What were you to... singing? 
uh, when I was a kid, uh, I was in choirs and I also sang uh, in church. And I also, um, I had a rock, I was in a rock band for a really short period of time in my high school years. Uh, and I love singing Broadway musicals actually. And I still had never taken a voice lesson until I was 20. Um, and so when I was 20, I took some voice lessons in college in a new college where they taught classical voice and that's where I learned about opera. Um, so it wasn't until I was 20 years old that I really, really learned about opera and actually fell in love with opera. And that's when I decided to make it my life, my job. Was there somebody in, in special that gave you, you know, the confidence to say, I'm a tenor, I got this voice, this is a gift and I wanna, you know, wanna get on with it. I, I wish I could say that there was somebody who pushed me early on. Uh, in reality, it was all just uh, going by what I felt was right for me. Um, you know, my family uh, was supportive of my decisions, but it was always my decision to make. They never, they never thought, oh, he should be an opera singer because it would, never, it would never be something they would think of, you know? It's just not natural, I guess, in America for people to think, oh, my son should be an opera singer someday. So uh, no, I, I, think, I think along the way, I just tried to build the confidence in myself as much as possible because uh, in the end, it, it always comes down to you. It always comes down to you and your mental health, your physical health, and your determination to become a better singer all the time because you'll never be perfect. Uh, and you're always trying to be perfect. And you know, you're always striving to be better and more communicative to the audience. And so, you know, if you don't have that drive inside of you in reality, there's no chance of having a career uh, like, like this. I'm very lucky to have it. Well, in a way, that's the beauty of the performance. You know, live music, live performance is, is going to be always different from one to the other. But are you also a professional uh, recording artist? Uh, I, I've made some recordings of operas and I also recorded Das Lied von der Erde this past year, but I haven't uh, my own solo recording contract yet. So wh what does this take you in the near future? I mean, wh what have you got lined up? Well, you know, I, I'm allowed to say certain things, but I know I'm, I'm performing in all the greatest, I'm lucky enough to be performing in all the greatest opera houses in the world. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm performing here in Italy. It's been announced even that next September, I'm doing uh, my first Samson in uh, Samson e Dalila at San Carlo. And that should be fun. Uh, and then I am a, I'm going to be at Scala in the future. I was supposed to be there, but then the pandemic, um, it canceled the, the contract. So uh, we're actually going to do something in a few years, which is great. Uh, so yeah, and, uh, and I, I look forward to all my contracts. I'll be in London. Uh, I, I have all so sorts of great roles coming up in the future. Uh, I'm singing my first Don Carlo in a couple of years. Um, my first Otello in three years uh, and I'm very excited about these roles. These are the kind of roles that a tenor, like a spinto tenor uh, really wants to dig into. Um, but I, I have lots of great things coming up. I'm doing more Forza in the future, um, tons of Puccini, tons of Verdi and maybe some Wagner, you know, down the road. Do you find yourself, you know, taking lessons on your own, like uh, watching things online and, you know, looking at what your, um... Uh, your other um, colleagues are doing or what, what they done no, before? I, I have a voice teacher. So I, I take voice lessons whenever I'm in New York with my voice teacher, sometimes five a week. Uh, if I'm only home for one week, I'll take six lessons, you know, because I, it's a great way to get better at your technique and make everything better for the next performances, but also to refresh stuff that I learned when I first switched to tenor 10 years ago, uh, you know, when, when everything changed and I, I didn't have the technique that I have now, I was still working and working uh, through it. So some of the repertoire like uh, Butterfly or Tosca or Carmen, those three roles, for instance, are some of my oldest roles that I've been doing as a tenor. And so I've changed, I've hopefully 
gotten better. And the idea is to make it refreshed and, and new almost every time. So I am always working in the studio with my teacher uh, to work on stuff. And when it comes to watching other people, um, I, I tend to go back further than my current colleagues. I tend to go back to the old school uh, singers we all love. And sometimes I'll check in on what what traditions they used to do or what's what I mean I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Giacomini for instance and you know I've watched every video that exists of Giuseppe Giacomini on YouTube and every every single interview he's ever given that's been recorded that I could find you know and so there are certain artists that I I look to and I admire and especially um, people of his generation are people that I'm a big fan of I mean I, I come from a singer who Basically, the technique I learned as a singer is the Italian technique of Giuseppe Giacomini. Um, my teacher studied a little bit with Fazola, who also worked with Giacomini. And so for that reason, I actually, I really feel like my technique is in line with his. Um, and also a little bit of my own teacher as well, who mixes his own ideas with the technique of the Italian old school. So I love singing in that style. And I think that's that's the reason why I've had success thus far is because I constantly am working on my technique. Could sound odd to Italian audiences, but we got all these uh, professionals, amazing talents around the world that are forced to learn our language because of the yeah. genre that they chose. Uh, yeah. is, it, is it something that, I don't know, that, does it open the door to something else for you? I mean, are you, uh, you know, curious for the Italian culture? You, you like visiting Italy and um, what, what does <laughs> that Italy. bring you? Yeah. I love Italy. Uh, the truth is I'm moving to Italy. Uh, okay. Uh, my wife and I are moving to Lazio. Uh, we're going to live in Lido dei Pini, very close to Anzio. So we're we're going to be living in New York and in near Rome, basically, for the rest of our lives, most likely. So, I mean, it, Italy is a very important country to me. I've been here roughly 20 different trips, at least. I mean, my voice teacher, for instance, he has a little masterclass school that he teaches young artists in, in uh, Ischia. And so for me, if I have some time off, and he's there, I can go study with him, but I can also have a little bit of a vacation. So, you know, I'm always coming to Italy. I love it here. It's what it's, Rome is my favorite city in the world. I mean, I just have, I have so much love for the Italian culture and my mother was a chef. And so I've, I've grown up eating tons of food from all over the world. And I, I can't tell you how much uh, the, the culture and um, experiences that you can have in Italy uh, are so easy to fall in love with. So for me, it's, it's my, one of my favorite places to be. Well, before I leave you, Brian, I want to know something yeah. more about the, um, you know, the way of living of a young tenor in 2022. I mean, do yeah. you pay attention to, I don't know, your physique and your look and your, the way you appear, the way you sure. do things in your private life that have a sort of uh, effect on your career? I mean, uh, as a as a somewhat public figure, I guess uh, you could say, and uh, you could say that you have to always, you have to be aware of your surroundings. I mean, you're on social media all the time, uh, so this is kind of the way of the modern tenor, the modern singer. Uh, we're always online. We're always on Instagram or Facebook and trying to communicate with our audience. Um, but also, uh, yeah, I work out. I love to lift weights. I, 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 I do it a lot. Um, I usually do it even more than I've been doing it recently. But, uh, you know, during COVID was the hardest part, actually, because we were just sitting around for so long. And now now it's great to be able to go back to the gym and, and get in shape. So, yeah, I mean, me and my colleagues, we all, I mean, I was just paying attention to my uh, friend, Anita Rakshvili, who you know, just had a baby and now she's back in the gym working out because our instrument is our entire body. So it's really important that it's in as best shape as possible. I don't think, you know, you have to have a six pack or eight pack uh, as, as uh, stomach muscles go, but you definitely have to have lower core strength in order to sing opera because that's where all the pressure is. This is free and the pressure is down in the lower abdomen. So you know, that's, that's where all the strength and power goes to communicate into a seat to a thousand seats or a 4,000 seat opera house. So it's super important to stay healthy. I also believe in mental health a lot. Um, 
I think everybody in my business should have, a, or anybody in the world really should have a therapist or somebody who they can talk to about their problems, who is willing to just listen and, and help them through them. That isn't their friend or their, you know, their relative, because that way it's someone who is, you know, external. It's really important. I also believe in mindfulness, um, where meditation is really important to my career right now. I, I've been doing meditation consistently now for months, and it's been something that I find to be extremely helpful with anxiety. Um, it helps friends I know with depression. It's really good uh, for many reasons to make you better for yourself and for others. So yeah, I believe in all of that. I think that there's a lot of stuff that we have to do um, in the background that most people don't know about in order to get on stage because we're athletes. And so it's just like a, a basketball player would have to go to the free throw line every morning and shoot 100 free throws over and over again so that when he goes to the game or she goes to the game, they'll make the shot. And it's the same thing for me. When I go up for the Be Natural in the Sundorma, I don't have to think, am I going to make it? I'm going to make it because I practice it over and over and over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my job. My job is to continuously practice so that when I'm in rehearsal, it's more practiced. And then when I'm in performance, it's ready to go. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for letting us know everything about a day in the life of a modern tenor. <laughs> <laughs> it's my pleasure. And hopefully we'll get to see you on The Way magazine and around theaters in Italy soon. I would love that. Okay, bye. Great chatting with you.